Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Spring Porter with Spring Solutions LLC. In this video, I am going over another EFT payment that I received in the District of New Jersey. I just received that, so I wanted to come on and show you what that looked like. I also wanted to go over a, a student deal. Uh, this student utilized the BK Hack method, um, and I wanted to show you that little success uh, from that deal. So if you're interested in seeing and hearing about these things, please stay tuned. Please note that I am not an attorney. This information is not indicated as legal advice. If you have not subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Please do so. I would really appreciate you. If you're new, welcome. If you are new, please know that bankruptcy unclaimed funds follow the federal rules. I have a lot of new people that will email me and I feel like I'm kind of like a broken record, but that's okay. I don't mind reiterating it. I've listed this a lot of times in my videos, um, but I'm also going to say this again, that the state rules don't apply when you're dealing with bankruptcy unclaimed funds. Uh, so the, the cap, the percentages that you can charge, there is no mention of a percentage commission for unclaimed funds in the bankruptcy code. And that's Title 11, in case you're interested in what the bankruptcy code is. You can research this, it's not there. It's also not mentioned anywhere on the bankruptcy court websites about a commission and what you can charge. Those are only on the state rules, right? So if you're dealing with mortgage overages, um, tax overages, or regular state unclaimed funds with the state of Maryland or the state of Tennessee. That is where you will see certain requirements like having a PI and having certain percentages that you can charge. So um, I want to just make sure that I reiterate that, that the process is different. Um, another difference in dealing with state funds uh, and then coming over and trying to do bankruptcy unclaimed funds is that you will notice that occasionally um, you'll have an EFT payment. You don't always get a paper check from the U.S. Treasury Department. Just like you get a regular tax refund that goes into your bank account, you will also get an EFT payment. And New Jersey, for sure, is one that uh, likes to do the transfers right to your bank account. So this basically is what this is. This deal, as I mentioned, uh, came, the case was from 2020. Um, I reached out to the creditor, which is the, the mother. I think they were married at some point, the ex-wife. She filed uh, a claim for back child support. No, child support is not something that you can discharge in bankruptcy at all. Um, so she was able to get some money from what he was able to pay into the court. So that's what these funds are for, the 225033. She was happy to receive that because, you know, it was a long time coming. She wasn't able to get to him, reach out to him or anything. But she was able, I was able to help her get these money, this money back from the court. Um, and she really appreciated that. January the 19th is when I filed the application, in case you're trying to figure out timeframes in New Jersey. Uh, I filed the application on the 19th, the very next day, on the 20th, because it says right here, this is the order. If you look up top, it says January the 20th. That's when the order was um, actually granted. And it says, you know, it's ordered and then the funds go to me. Uh, February the 23rd right here, this is the entry from my business checking account. And you will see it says tre Treasury Miscellaneous Pay. And you see the same amount, 225033. And that's what is here. So um, that is a pretty quick turnaround, if you ask me. I think I got 350 from here. So she walked away with 1900. Um, and that was fine for her. She appreciated that I was able to get something back from her because it's been such a long time coming with a divorce and then child support. And she had a lot of other issues. So she was happy to get this. So you just never know, as I keep mentioning, people are like, well, what are the funds for? Why are the funds available? Well, in this case, they're for child support. In another case, it could be for a tax refund that the court didn't take. And they're like, okay, you can keep your little money. Um, it could be for the sale of a house. It could be for anything, to be honest. Um, that's why the funds are there. So sometimes, again, it pays, and this is what I teach you in the program, how to read the court docket so that you can better reach out to the clients and you can take away their doubt. When you take away someone's doubt, they're more willing to work with you. They understand what, you, what you're talking about. They know that you know what you're talking about. I was able to tell her, hey, this is for child support. I know you were trying to, you know, probably reach out to the ex, trying to get money from him. Well, let me help you. You see, you come in kind of as a savior if you're able to kind of read through the court documents uh, and get them on your side. All right. So this concludes this part of the uh, video. We're going to move on to the next one. Thanks. All right, so in this video, we're going over um, the BK hack method. The first slide um, that was 
a direct payment to me utilizing uh, the traditional method, which is in the $500 course. This is in the $250 course for this particular um, video on this deal. So my student, um, she reached out, she worked in the Eastern District of Virginia for this, because again, that district does not work with third parties. You don't get paid directly in this district. But the way that you can make money is if you're just filling in the documents, giving the instructions to the client, and then they in turn pay you a small commission, um, and then they will process everything on their own. Because for these districts, um, you either have to be a lawyer or you could just be the client that is filing their own paperwork. Most people just don't know how to do that. And so that is what I basically um, put into this program. This is a harder course to sell. Some people may not going to want to pay you up front. Um, some people want to pay you on the back end. And again, none of these documents are going to be filed in with the court like they would for the $500 method in terms of like a contract, a signed contract and everything else that you need to submit as supporting documentation. In this $250 program, um, you know, you don't have the, all the other documentation. The only thing you have is just the application itself to the court because again, you're the client filling this in. I hope that makes sense uh, what I'm saying here. So let me just break down this particular case. Very small deals uh, when someone's going to pay you up front as a small commission you would probably want to stay somewhere under maybe 1500 or less. So in this case, it was 879.22. Looks like it was a husband and wife, chapter 13. I can't think the case was just dismissed because they failed to make plan payments. So my student was able to charge $100 just for doing the documents. And the way that I lay it out in the program, it's just kind of filling in the blanks, to be honest. I've highlighted it. I've showed you where to fill it in. And all you're doing is just kind of copying and pasting the, the right information, pasting it in an email, or you're mailing it out to them if they wish. Um, I think she did say these clients were a little bit older, so they didn't have access to like email and printing things off. So she had to mail them. They didn't have access to PayPal or Cash App, so she had to receive a paper check. But she did get it. And it looks like they mailed the check out on the 25th. Um, and it looks like January the 31st, is when the motion was received. It looks like she got payment before it was actually filed in is what I'm saying, because this is the motion here, January 31st, and then the order was granted February the 24th, and she already has the money here. So that's how you can get paid prior to the actual work being done, because you're just doing the, an, an exchange uh, for the documents and information. Hey, I did this for you. Can I have a commission now? Um, and so that is what you're doing in this particular district. There's another district, I think, the Eastern District of Kentucky, I believe, um, where I cater to just the areas where you have to be a lawyer or the client. Okay, so this method does work. It's a hard course to sell, but it does work. I've done it on my own. My student has done it. She followed what was in the program. And here you have it. And I think I did update these forms. And I think she was still able to use them without a problem. The client was able to, to do everything. I don't see any deficiency notices here that says something was missing. So she was able to kind of follow along, uh, and so were her clients. So she did a really good job here. And, I mean, I'm sure filling in the documents does not take that long, to be honest. Probably takes, what, like 10 minutes, maybe less than that, because it's already formulated. All this here is already typed in. All you have to do is just plug in the name, case number, and you move on to the next form or to the next client that you're trying to reach out to. All right, so if you're interested in any of the programs, um, the link is in the description box. Um, there's a two for one special for 625. The main course is 500. Uh, the VK hat course is 250. All right, so uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Please like, share, subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.